we've managed to detect exactly where we're clicking on the ground. Now we need to move our player towards the actual position. So in order to do that, we're going to create a variable that will hold the position that we're going to walk towards. The next thing that we need to do is look down in the handle complete function. And we're going to take particular interest in these two lines of code here, which start with ticker. Now the ticker is something that happens every frame per second. And at the present, it's set at 30 frames per second. And what this does is update the stage each frame. The stage itself is set to the canvas element earlier in the code. So what we're doing is updating the canvas 30 frames per second. Now we want to continue to do that, but we also want to update some code that we're going to write that's going to power the game. That also has to be updated every single frame per second. We do that by changing stage to window. This now sets the ticker to look in this window for a function named tick. It gets quite confusing thinking of ticker and tick, but the ticker is automatically set to look for functions with the name tick. Let's go ahead and create that tick function. I'm just going to add it before my final script tag. So as this runs every frame, we want to detect whether we're actually playing our game or not. And we do that with an if statement. So our if statement asks if in play is equal to true. If it is, and it is when we use the start click, then we obviously want to do things to do with our game. And in this particular instance, we want to move our character. So we're going to create a function named hero move. If you notice, we're creating unique functions for each piece of code that we make. That's so that if we need to edit the hero's movement, we know exactly where to look. Likewise, if we need to edit where we're clicking on the ground, we know exactly the area that we need to edit. So it's particularly important to break your code up like this. Now at the moment, nothing will happen unless we update the stage. So let's do that. Okay, now we need to just set the walk position. We'll do that in the set title. So we're setting the walk position to equal our hero's X position. That means when we first start up, we'll know that we're not to walk anywhere because our target position is the same as the position we're actually at. So when we click on the ground, we want to set the walk position to the position that we've actually clicked on the ground. So inside the ground click, we set the walk position to equal the code that we looked at in the console log earlier on. So we can just copy and paste that to this line. And then we don't really need to see the console log anymore. So let's just comment out that code. Now we can get on with creating the hero move function. And the first thing that the hero move function needs to do is work out whether we've clicked to the left or right of the hero. That way we'll know which direction we're to point the hero in and move. So this if statement asks if the walk position is less than the hero's current X position. If it is, it means we're going to want to move the hero towards the left. We do that by taking seven pixels off the X position of the hero every frame. That way it gives the illusion that we're moving towards the left. We also want to flip the hero so that he's facing towards the left hand side. When we start the game, he's facing towards the right. So we need to flip on the X axis. Using minus one to flip the hero on the scale X would work under normal circumstances. However, our hero in the flash file has been scaled up to 175% and it was exported at 175%. So minus one would actually cause him to be squashed in horizontally. So to make it look right, we want to do minus 1.75, which is 175%. Okay, to do the opposite and to detect whether we're going in the other direction, all we really need to do here is have an else statement and we can copy the code that we had before paste that in, change the negative to a positive, and just remove the negative from that line. And we've got a slight mistake there. It should be equal minus 1.75, but we've caught it in time. Okay, we can now save that and we'll test that in the browser. So when we start the game and we've tested it in the browser, we'll see that there's a problem instantly. It moves to the position that we want to get to, 
But once it gets there, it flips violently between left and right position. And that's because it doesn't quite know when to stop moving. So it goes a little bit past it, then a little bit back the other way, then a little bit past it, and it never actually reaches its target point. This is something that's easily fixable. Going back to our code, we're going to create a new variable now called moving, which is going to control whether we're moving or not. Let's add it in at the top and let's declare that variable in the set title. Once we click on the ground, we obviously want to move. So in the ground click, we're going to say moving equals true. Now inside the hero move, we're going to type if moving, close that off. Let's indent this line. If we're moving, then do this. Let's save that and see what happens now. Well, it fixes it when we first start up. What about when we get to a point? No, it's still not working. We still haven't fixed that we've actually hit the point we need to get to. So we need to be a little bit more approximate in what we do. Let's create a variable named diff, short for difference. And we're going to make that equal our walk position minus the hero's x position. Then another if statement. So what we're saying here is if our difference is less than 5.1 and greater than minus 5.1, then approximately we're pretty close to our position that we want to stop. So in here, we're going to say moving equals false. Let's save that. Give that a test again. And when we move somewhere, we avoid the violent flipping that we've had before. Now all we need to do is create the animation. That way it'll give the full illusion that we're actually walking towards those positions instead of sliding along the ground.